Okay, this problem is a little bit more complex than the last one. Uh, this also deals with friction for an object moving horizontally. However, now instead of just finding the friction force, we actually have an accelerating object. We also have a pull force that is not directly horizontal. So in this, uh, we have a 25.5 kilogram object. So I might as well just draw that object. And that's the mass uh, with a force of 12.0 newtons at 35 degrees with respect to the horizontal. So this would be if they were pulling it horizontally, but they're not. They're pulling it at an angle of 35 degrees. And the force with which they're pulling that is 12 newtons. So now we're trying to find, um, they also tell us the coefficient of friction is 0 0.30. So ask yourself, if, is this a static coefficient of friction or kinetic? Well, since we're trying to find the acceleration of the object, it's kind of clear that the object is moving. So therefore, they're telling us that our kinetic coefficient of friction is 0 0.30. So now uh, let's get more forces on our diagram. We always know that gravity acts downward. We always know that there is, if the object is supported, then there is a normal force and it's perpendicular to the surface. We also know that there is a friction force on this. And since the object is being pulled to the right and up, um, this object is going to move forward. And so we have the friction that's opposite of that, which is going to be backwards. So now, the very first step when you're doing any of these problems should be to find the gravitational force, which Fg is just mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So take that 25.5 multiplied by negative 9.81. Both have three significant figures, so our answer should have three. Uh, 25.5 times negative 9.81 is negative 250.155, but that rounds to negative 250. But this is supposed to have three sig figs, and the only way to write that is actually in scientific notation. So you would have to write negative 2.50 times 10 to the second newtons. So this shows that there's three sig figs, but we can work with this number moving forward. Well, next we have to find the normal force. After we have gravity force, we have normal force. In most of the problems we've done, gravity force and normal force have been the only two forces in the y direction. But look, there's a pull force, which is not only in the x direction, but also in the y direction. So guess what we have to do with this pull force that's at an angle? They give us the force, they give us the angle. If you answered in your head components, you're exactly right. So, if you look at this, I have a right triangle here with an angle. I have the hypotenuse. This part here is going to be force of the pull in the x direction, and this is going to be force of the pull in the y direction. So, the y direction is opposite, so we're going to use sine. So, that's going to be 12 sine 35 and the x direction is going to be using cosine because it's the adjacent. So putting those in your calculator again three significant figures 12 sine 35 uh, is 6.88 And then 12 cosine 35 is 9.83. So now, uh, in order to find the normal force, let's think about the situation. In the y direction, you have to think to yourself, do we have acceleration? No, because this object is being pulled. We want this object really only moving forward across the um, across the surface. And so if we don't have acceleration in the y direction, what situation is that? Well, that's equilibrium. 
And under equilibrium, we know that our net force is zero. And that's the y direction. So f net y has to be zero. Well, that means that all of the forces in the y direction have to add up to zero. So what are the forces in the y direction? I have gravity. We have the force of the pull in the y component. We also have the normal force. So all three of those have to add up to zero. So gravity, that was uh, negative 250. The pull in the y direction is up, so it's positive, And that's 6.88. So it's very small compared to gravity. And then we have our normal force. So hopefully you should be able to solve this rather quickly. The normal force would have to be 250 minus 6.88, which is 243. Now, remembering how to do sig figs, it's always the last decimal place. So really, since this has no decimal places, my answer should have no decimal places. So this actually becomes 243 newtons. So there's our normal force. The reason why it's important to find our normal force is because once we know the normal force, we know the friction force. So the third step would be to find the friction force. Well, if you remember, friction force is related to normal force, which makes sense. The harder you push down on an object, the um, harder it is to pull it across a surface. Equals my coefficient of friction, and since it's moving, it's kinetic times the normal force. So I remember this by fun, friction coefficient looks like a u, and then the normal force is n. So friction force equals mu, which they told us was 0 0.3. Normal force was 243. So multiplying those two together, we have two sig figs and three sig figs. So 243 times 0.3. We need two significant figures, 72.9 rounds to 73. So our friction force is 73 newtons. Now, in all the previous problems, that has been our last step. However, here, we do not actually have that. We have a different situation. Uh, and so for this, acceleration of the object, we have the object accelerating in the x direction. So in this, the way we would set that up is that we need to find our net force in the x direction. Our net force in the x direction. So pay attention to what's going on. And in that, we have uh, friction force plus FPX. So friction force and the force of the pull in the x direction are the only things going on. So really, we get, since this 73 is in the negative direction, this should be negative. So we have negative 73 plus the force of the pull in the x direction, 9.83. So 70, negative 73 plus 9.83 is going to be negative 63 point, uh, actually we should have no decimal places, so negative 63 newtons. So in this situation, you may be wondering, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Why is friction force greater than the pull force? You're right. This object actually would not move. So this is a case where the friction force, um, if you get something where it's greater, that means that you are actually not pulling with a great enough um, force. So let's move forward assuming that this was a positive number. So I actually gave you guys, a, I was making up numbers, um, and this is not possible. 
But let's assume, let's pretend that that was a positive 63. In other words, pretend that my pull force exceeded my friction force by 63 newtons. Well, if I know that my net force was 63 newtons, and I'm trying to find my acceleration, this equals mass times acceleration. All you have to do is plug in your mass and divide by mass. So you get 63 equals 25.5 times acceleration. You guys can divide that to find acceleration. So if you're confused about this, what I was talking about here, all this means is that in reality, I should have given you a pull force that was great enough to exceed the friction force. In other words, this actually isn't kinetic friction. It's static. Um, so another type of problem would be what pull is required to match the friction force? In other words, what pull is required uh, to cause this to move?